Welcome to another episode of the Elephant in the Room podcast. As usual, I'm your host, the Chief Thinker, Ron Yangari. I am joined by the able... Radhika Bachu, Super Striker. And today we have a special guest. Who's the guest, Rods? Oh. Who is the guest? He is the best in the business, mm-hmm. Gian Paolo. Oh, wow. Full name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, GP, welcome. So for Thank those you. of you who don't know, GP is a third co-founder of our business. He is the man behind the tech. Um, we give him, as the business people, a lot of stress, and he still put up with us, so that means he's got he's resilient. Um, patient. patient. <laughs> <laughs> and this yeah. is why we make such a great yeah. team, because we finish each other's sentences. But welcome, GP. Tell, Thank uh, you. Tell the audience they've been dying to meet you. Have they? Yeah. The they didn't even know two minutes before. <laughs> no. <but> they, they, <laughs> that was existing. No, no the, the man behind the tech. You're right. the man behind the yeah. tech. I've listened to your podcasts. They're amazing. So, uh, first of all, great, great job, guys. Thanks. And thanks thanks for hosting me. Thanks. So, no, tell the audience who you are, what Uh, you do. All right, Uh, I'm uh, GP, um, Giampaolo, Italian, as you can hear from my accent and my name. And, uh, yeah, I've been in tech basically all my life. It's been 20 years now. Uh, Corporate, startups, I love the startups world. Uh, and that's how I met these guys. We were in the same, uh, just like uh, context, ecosystems, and uh, we decided to start this journey together with uh, Ndovu, and uh, now we are here talking about it and try to inform some of you guys on making the right decision. Yeah, and uh, d- just in his private time, GP actually does a lot of angel investing, which yeah. is quite exciting. Um, so not only does he like to build tech, but he also believes in the ecosystem and the value of how technology can really change, shape industries um, in every aspect. So GP, tell us, um, you know, when it comes to building a fintech, uh, what are the couple of nuggets of wisdom, as we know, we always call you the wise man. Yep. You would. Why well, you call it for the the white beard? Yeah. <laughs> Salt and pepper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> George Clooney in the making. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> No, but do tell us, um, you know, what could you share? What has been your journey? A few nuggets. Of yeah. uh, so uh, particularly from fintech, but also applicable to every sector. So I've been uh, in many sectors uh, myself, not only here, but the things that you have to keep in mind when you build a product for the fintech. Yeah. Uh, mainly three things. First thing is security. Uh, money have to be protected at all costs. Agreed. Second is uh, robustness of the system, so it doesn't have to break, otherwise it's just a like bad experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And third is um, easy of use of your system. So even if at the back there is a lot of uh, things happening and complexity, yeah. uh, the final user experience has to be smooth. Yeah. And that's where the user um, appreciates you for. Yeah, and actually, like when we get lots of feedback from our clients, they did the one thing that everyone has told me is that it's so easy to use. So you're clearly doing something right. We're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only the, the the job of the tech guy; it's a, 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 a job of the whole uh, group when it comes to getting a good product out. No, agreed. So it's yeah. uh, it's actually a great uh, a great team that we have, and uh, if there is a good product that people appreciate, is a uh, all our uh, good job. So guys, today we're going to be talking about tech trends. Um, and in order to do that, we're bringing somebody who knows about the tech market, who really lives and breathes this on a daily. Somebody like me knows a little bit about Web3, crypto, digital currencies, um, NFTs, all the trending things because of social media. But we really brought someone today to really talk about it. So um, GP, tell us, yeah. walk us through the evolution of tech. Wow, evolution of tech is <laughs> broad. Yeah. Um, so in the ecosystem of um, the the fintech, let's uh, let's focus on that, right? Because um, uh, it's important that we are specific for this sector. What has happened specifically in uh, in the uh, in Kenya, but the whole world? Yeah. yeah. Digital currency has taken over. So uh, you guys have also the Pesa, right? So that's uh, that, digital that's considered currency. Di- digital currency. Yeah. So it's not only crypto. Sometimes people confuse it. Digital currency is every time you make a transaction and you're not using paper anymore. Exactly. So at the beginning of the time, you were 
partnering. So it's just like uh, exchanging one good for another. And then we introduced like these coins, right? So there was money that was exchanged. So one coin is worth uh, three cows or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then we try to assign as a uh, humans, we always like to make stories, <laughs> right? So the story in this case is uh, I associate to this coin a certain value. Mm -hmm. And if everyone believes it, at the end of the day, that coin has a certain value that can appreciate, depreciate through time, but it has now a solid value. The more people believe in this story, the more value this, this coin has. And as civilization progresses, there are banks that are built and um, um, you know institutions and yeah. we protect these uh, these things that are now worth for human beings people can die for money they jumped out of buildings yeah because yes. of stress right yeah. so yeah. That this is, this has become a real thing uh, but the money itself uh, is just a piece of paper it's mm -hmm. a piece of coin metal yeah. so not, not really not really worth it unless you uh, have the idea of it Find this value to it. Right, yes. value to it. Yeah. So now we have uh, this uh, progression. So next step in the human evolution is that now we have everything digitalized. There is the opportunity to make everything easier for humans to exchange um, these uh, ideas. Yeah. And that's where the digital uh, world comes in. Right. And now we have uh, numbers on a computer yeah. rather than the piece of paper. Uh, and now, the, the recent days, what do we have? Do we have this crypto, and, uh, and everyone is talking about that. Everyone's so that, trending. Uh, that there, there is a bit of evolution in that. I don't know if this is the evolution that you were mentioning, but that's for me uh, an amazing step-by-step uh, -step, um, uh, journey. Yeah, no, and I completely agree. I think uh, crypto is definitely the craze. Um, yes. Especially last year when crypto, you know, everybody on social media was talking about it. Everybody um, really had a drive. So crypto has been around for a really long time. Crypto mainly the two key currencies there are Ethereum and Bitcoin. Bitcoin yeah. um, and they're the largest. And of course, of course, there's like lots of uh, meme coins and other types of currency that are trying to become more popular. Um, and Ro, what are the numbers on the crypto market in Kenya? Uh, the number one is Kenya is number one globally, peer-to-peer uh, -peer transfers. I'm talking peer-to-peer, -peer, it goes back to what uh, GP said, M-Pesa. So you're sending money to someone, he's sending money back to you, that's peer-to-peer. -peer. So you can do this with, with crypto. Someone buys, you send him something, they send you back. So number one globally is Kenya. I think about five million Kenyans are currently active in the crypto space. So what I love about Kenyans is, is that they love to try new digital products. So they're not a closed community, they're quite open-minded and for them, they're okay to try a new product. Yep. And they'll say, okay, if it doesn't work, whatever, made my mind up, but they just love trying new stuff. And this is insane, right? They're the largest, the number one globally for trading peer-to-peer -peer crypto. Correct, yes. That's huge. Right. And then in terms, I think, of absolute value, like what people are actually holding, if you take it down from these transactions, Kenya's number five. So Kenyans are super active in this space. And I think it's correct now to make our CTO sweat a bit and ask <laughs> him, you know. Difficult question. Yeah, well, what, what is crypto? I'm ready. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> what is crypto? Why, why do people love it so much? Um, the reason why crypto is a, is a big thing is the decentralization concept. Right, okay. so Tell you don't more. have anymore a central bank that is handling your money. Okay. The money is spread in a ledger, it's called ledger, yep. uh, across every person in the node of this network. Mm -hmm. So uh, before you had your bank, or currently you still have a bank, but <laughs> yeah. um, before crypto, let's say. Um, and the bank holds all your uh, ledger and the transactions and everything. Yeah. Now everything is spread across um, uh, each node of this uh, fantastic network. Okay. okay. So that's yeah. the main uh, idea behind uh, cryptocurrency and the Bitcoin, first one that became very big. Now we are in the world where there are a few cryptos, as uh, Radhika was mentioning before, um, and they are trading at uh, volumes that are unbelievable. So yeah. the, the crypto market currently is $1 trillion. Uh, dollars. 
right? So it's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, if you asked me if you, six months ago, it was three. Yeah. 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 So it kind of like. <laughs> We've all but been one there. trillion is still massive. It's massive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One trillion is still massive, and, and still dominated by the main currencies. Um, yeah. So Bitcoin is a is a pure crypto. Correct. Whereas Ethereum is more is, is something different. Um, so it's still uh, it's still a cryptocurrency, but uh, and underneath there is a blockchain um, system that allows what is called um, smart contracts. Mm -hmm. So you can build little pieces of programs onto, to it. On, onto it. So where you can build uh, basically whatever. Mm -hmm. And your program yeah. is uh, decentralized. Let me interrupt your flow there, GP. Mm. You've, you've introduced a new word, blockchain, right? Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between the blockchain that you're talking about and, and cryptocurrency. Mm. Uh, folks tend to think it's the same thing. It's the same yeah. thing. Or when you mention to someone, oh, I'm doing blockchain, they tell you, we don't want crypto. So <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, so, you, yeah so, so the, the, the difference is um, um, the people mix it because uh, uh, Bitcoin was uh, the first crypto built on a blockchain. Okay. Yeah. Right? So the blockchain is the inf uh, architectural infrastructure. So it's the the tech part of it. Okay. Okay, and uh, the the crypto is the the actual value of the money uh, uh, that that is on top of it. Okay. So you you cannot confuse it because, uh, f for example, for Ethereum, the blockchain is a is a fantastic piece of technology, mm -hmm. uh, where again you can build your own program on it. But, uh, imagine, for example, a future where um, you you have I'm closing an imagination. <laughs> 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 okay. I don't want to put you on the, on an island. I want to <laughs> okay. Palm and a beautiful beach. Yeah. Uh, now imagine the, the this world where uh, rather than going to a lawyer to form a a company, company. Yes. yes. You have an already established piece of uh, software. Mm -hmm. You click a button. You create a new company. With everyone is sh uh, their own shares. There are some variables. Yeah. Okay, you get this, you get this, you get that, and you don't have all this process behind it. It's like time consuming, notary acts, lawyers involved. Lots of costs. Lots of costs. Yeah. And each one of the contracts is different from each other, so um, you can easily get lost in that. Yeah. If we had a world where everything was simple, mm -hmm. and on a blockchain, that's decentralized, so me meaning that it's accessible by everyone, so okay. there's the level of transparency, Yeah. and also it be uh, everything becomes much easier. So um, there is a little bit of reluctancy uh, around the adoption of it, because uh, you know there are lobbies and yeah. people, and regulations, yeah. you know, yeah. and we are still tight. In every country, uh, people are a little bit afraid of adopting always new technologies, but that would be um, the perfect framework. So the blockchain underneath is something that um, uh, can bring a lot of value yeah. to the society. Okay. And then, so so just to be clear, that's now the infrastructure where you can develop different types of products that gives everyone transparency, ease of access, and then the crypto is actually the value so it's just currency built upon yeah the, the currency yeah, so, so yeah. this is why people shouldn't get confused between crypto being blockchain and vice versa mm -hmm. because there we've seen this so much yes um, you know uh, one of the features is that Dovu uses blockchain to build our auditing and reporting segment of the business. And when we go to certain regulators or other parties, they'll say, oh, you've got crypto on your platform. And we're like, yeah, no, 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 that's yeah. not it. We're actually using blockchain to build a part of our business yes. to you know make sure the platform is secure transparent and allows us to report correctly for for those of us who've been alive long enough right we, we've seen different terms <laughs> i saw that <laughs> we've seen different terms at different times over the years uh blockchain being the latest one uh but there are also terms out there we we hear about web one web two web three you know mm -hmm. Uh, can you briefly just touch on this? So what is Web 1? What is Web 2? Yeah. And everyone talking about the future being Web 3. Yeah. Okay. It's very simple. Yeah. Like uh, uh, the Web 1 was at the very beginning, static web web pages. So mm -hmm. every business creates their own uh, website. Yeah. And users just like uh, get information out of it. Okay. Uh, web 2 is more like interactive, where so uh, now the user 
Yeah. So this is like the web two is like interactive, like Facebook. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you have uh, what we have things now. Yeah, yeah, Forever. that's what we have now. Okay, uh, okay. And then we are transitioning to the web three, right? So, okay, uh, where there is this uh, decentralization again, uh, where the power is in, on the hand of each one of the users, right? Rather than a single uh, institution or uh, a single node o- owning the data. Yeah. Now the data is owned by uh, people. So that's really interesting. So the likes of big companies like Google, Microsoft and the likes will now own less data potentially. eventually, potentially, yeah. Yeah. Um, because the data will be owned. Yeah, th- th- let's but let's they say, say the that data is going to be the next big thing. So if it's becoming decentralized and it loses its value, right, because it's available to everyone. Or am I? I, I can read in a different way on that one. OK, okay? tell me. Because I think right now in Web2, uh, the data is being held by the big firms, right? Yes. Hence, they have stupendous valuations. Yes. Okay. What if we democratize data. this value? Yeah. The the value of this, because think about now, you go onto a site, you upload your data. Yeah. Put your video. Yeah. GP is making a pizza, he uploads it. You know, yeah. all this data is owned by someone now, but it's actually his data. Yeah. Right. They are making value of his data. What he's feeding. Yeah. What if we ensure that you, him with his pizza, myself. The data that we upload, we still own the value in it. So that's really interesting yeah. because, you know, one of the key things whilst I was working at BlackRock was, you know, data is going to be everything. You know, data new predicts. Oil. Yes, the new oil. Yeah. Yes, you've been you've been following some <laughs> some real trends, market <laughs> trends. Yeah, but so, so does this mean that now that GP owns the data, the value really comes in how you take the data off GP and analyze it? Like what is why will it be big? Why would big data be oil? Well, big data is very important now for a couple of reasons. Okay. The main two that I see is uh, the analysis that you have, so you yeah, can 100%. can uh, can have a better business intelligence around yeah. your better business. Better advertising. Yeah, better advertising. You you target Grow. your uh, yeah. uh, you target your uh, advertisement and marketing for your customers as you as if you were talking to them. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. The other thing why data is important is uh, for these new artificial intelligence yes. um, settings where you know you're training uh, the machines to think with uh, a certain level of intelligence mm-hmm. to perform some tasks yeah. uh, or just like uh, spe- can, they can be specific or uh, uh, generic. But so far, uh, AI has been very, very good at specific things. Okay. Yes. So whenever um, we have been programming AIs, we need a big amount of data. Correct. To, to make sure that the the training happens and this uh, brain, this little uh, artificial brain, yeah, artificial brain can perform better and better. Correct. Right? And, yeah. and become even better than humans in some Various. sectors. Yes. Yeah. So this uh, this is the power of the data at the moment, yeah. Okay, mm. but so if we're trying to, and we don't have to unpack it today, but if mm-hmm. we're going to decentralize the ownership of data, the value then shifts to how do you take the data that's decentralized mm-hmm. and then use it, right? Because right now we lack data, right? We I don't have data on, the corporates have the data. Yeah. So re- is that the goal of now Web3 to really decentralize? Eventually we go that direction. So this is why the uh, bigger companies probably want to keep things uh, and data internally yeah. yeah so because they would l- they will lose quite a big chunk of power yeah uh, as if, a for, uh, if someone invented the, uh, the, the first uh, Facebook or Google decentralized and there was a massive adoption on that then all of a sudden this thing is uh, owned by uh, virtually everyone yeah the level of transparency will be enormous yeah uh, but, people but then how the would you, yeah, then you lose privacy, privacy, yeah. you lose um, and then competitive edge because yeah, everything is readily available. My philosophy is more towards like uh, community. OK. Right, and the power of community. Right? OK. And I personally wouldn't mind to lose a little bit of my privacy. OK. okay? But uh, every individual is very different. Yeah. We yes. have been born in a certain society. Yeah. And this society has always uh, taught us, at least in the Western world, uh, the power of individualism. Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, we've been always given that power. Yeah. Uh, and this has been reflected also in the institutions and the way the society has been structured. Yes. But in some other societies, you see the ants 
you see the um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're going there yes. and, uh, and we're from the brain no and, uh, the <laughs> and, still have to deal with the daily business by the way and and uh, yeah. you know uh, the, 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 their nest and uh, even even um, uh, other other animals that even bees have, have you bees. seen a bee movie yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. Like bees bees, yes. bees are, are, are another amazing example yeah so they i don't know how they magically work together they do they do the little dances to communicate yeah. with each other or the ants they have their smell that can just be spread i don't know how i, I i'm not qualified there's enough something. to <laughs> there's something there's something there yeah. that yeah. is happening but yeah. they all know what they're doing o- at all time yes right so um eventually if uh, th- this decentralization goes wild yeah w- we can become this sort of society where there is a higher level of consciousness that we as individuals wouldn't even conceive yes right and you are get we are stepping to the next level of society Understood. right so that's that's uh, the philosophical thing behind it and maybe this is the the reason why you know um, human beings will ex- get extinct one day yeah. <laughs> you know we're just like too focus on yeah. our individualism yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and yeah. other other form of beings will take over and that's really interesting concept, yeah. Yeah. yeah because also if you think about it actually um, i used to s- you know when you speak to people and and talk about poverty and world hunger and things like that yeah you know you picture a world where everybody was no i wouldn't say equal but everywhere there was no poverty mm. right this eventually could lead to that because you're all working together yeah. to actually eradicate some of the key problems that we have across Mutual the globe problems yes yeah. yes and yes, and yes. you know and it, and then you come into a realm of okay we're all we're not equal but we are at a we've solved for some problems there is a, a big issue here is that we are still in our biological body yeah and we still have our own way of thinking that yeah. comes from our primate brain yeah. which is like greed has always led us to me, to, me, keep, me. to yes. develop in this way so yeah. i don't know what is going to happen in the future if we're going to go more towards the still individualistic um, few people holding the power sort of society or something where okay let's go a bit more community wise and yeah. spread uh, aside from that there is uh, the the global warming yeah. um so all the, we have to be conscious of what is happening because we don't have sustainability in place yet we don't. spread yeah. around so we have few panels that are used not not really super um efficient uh, wind not really great yeah. we're not yeah. there with the uh, solar uh, is taking off in africa yeah right? the green energy side yes yeah. Yeah. but still LPG you have is quite big as well you still have like batteries issues and yeah. how you you move things around so there are still problems the infrastructure is not there yet mm-hmm. but we are a crucial point where like in a few years there is a, a problem we yeah. cannot go back so i mean um i love as much as i love um crypto and and this world we need to step to uh, another um level where uh, the um, we have to be conscious of yeah. uh sustainable environment so there are different algorithms that are using less different energy. methodology and much much less energy okay. than, uh-huh. than yeah. bitcoin so yeah. uh, uh at, as we speak i'm not really a fan of bitcoin for yeah. this reason yeah. really interesting because right now it's the largest cryptocurrency and i'd love to see because can something so powerful as global warming be the demise of bitcoin being the most popular coin it is yeah, yeah. if you've been around for long enough you'll see evolution of industries okay so there are companies that were behemoth this was everything in the too world too big to fail too big to fail yeah. right from the 20s to the 50s they they the ones dominating uh, technology uh, sectors or manufacturing yeah. but then there was a shift there was a shift in technology outside there was a shift in social structure yeah. the companies vanished overnight and, and new titans came into play yeah. I don't see an exception uh, in this particular case right yeah. in that we, we have challenges you're facing around uh, climate change can we move away from proof of work and create new currencies that are more sustainable yeah why not yeah. and i do believe that the rate of innovation will be much higher um going forward just generally because we're getting mm. smarter let me give you a funny story yeah uh in 1905 not 1966 <laughs> <laughs> way earlier you were around <laughs> I, was, i was about 18 years then yeah. right yeah. just getting to my teenage years 1905 
there was a fellow in the UK. He was the head of the patents office. Okay. So patents is where you go with your innovations and you protect them under law. So this guy in 1905 uh, was at a press, a press conference and then he's asked about innovation. Mm. And he says, it's 1905, guys. Everything that will ever be invented by man has been invented. <laughs> I don't see anything else ever coming out. Yeah. Shortly after we saw cars, we saw planes, you know, all this yeah. stuff came out. So I think innovation will actually increase. Yeah. Right? So. We're going to see stuff that we've not thought about. So actually, uh, yeah. key nugget, in I was reading a report that said in 2030, which is only eight years away, yeah. we'll have the first flying car actually operational. I don't know. They, they say Back the same the 20 years ago and, uh, yeah. and we are still on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, it's, a, it's a research paper. You can believe it, not yeah. believe it, but there's a lot of research, so... We've discussed blockchain. We've gone into philosophical issues. I, I was also thinking about avatar when you're talking about consciousness. I was also thinking <laughs> yeah. about uh, the shortage of water, fresh water we're going to experience in the yeah. next 50 years. We're here I to have sort a lot out of problem. problems. <laughs> Too many problems. There's a lot going on. Yes. Yeah. GP, uh -huh. what is a metaverse? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, since since we are going down the holes, holes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is Full a metaverse? transparency, guys. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't see the value. That's what it is. I don't see the value. But go over okay, to the so expert. Okay, so imagine a world. Yeah. Okay, I'm making you imagining a lot. Again, of this is good. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. this time, yeah. rather than being real, yes. where you're walking on a beach and there is a, the water. Yeah. And you're, everything is inside your head. <laughs> With You're sitting on your couch. Yeah. And you have these little virtual, virtual glasses. A headset. Over there, headset yes. You yeah. put in your head. Right. And then you're doing all these things around with uh, with your uh, community of people. Mm -hmm. that they are on the couches at their home places. <laughs> okay. So, like, I get that. I really get that. Yeah. And, and this is my age, right? I know there's, like, kids nowadays. They're on video games, playing virtually with friends around the world. Yeah. Um, lots of things are happening virtually but then this concept of buying land in the virtual world where you're hearing ridiculous stories of people on social media saying I paid 10 grand for virtual this, real yeah, estate yeah virtual real estate and I'm like wait that's a scam okay so <laughs> like what this is this is very interesting though yeah yeah if you're buying the concept yeah. that one day this is gonna have we, value this is gonna this is gonna be like this uh, headset and people in their home is this is gonna be uh, part of the future yeah. yeah then there will be a lot of different dynamics in the economics of this new world 100% okay? where you have mm, your land into this uh, uh, virtual world yeah. yeah and you have potentially also advertisement that are targeting you yeah so when I see people buying lands and there is also this uh, NFT I don't know if you want to touch that yeah 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 and uh, th th they are buying specific they're buying elements. artworks elements yeah, yeah all of this stuff then companies that are buying it probably i don't know they are mm -hmm. buying it for um for com commercialization yeah. Yeah. Uh, where you can just like advertise your comp uh, company <laughs> or a product to the person that is sitting on the couch so the thing is right it just takes me back to age again. Do you think we'll be around when this is <laughs> <laughs> significantly adopted? We we are we have been living in a world where we need to touch each yeah, other. Yeah, we need yeah, to be yeah. like so. It's inconceivable for us. Yes. And to whoever I speak to that is even a little bit older than me. Yeah. Can't you believe there are people that are older than me? Um, and they are just like, what is happening now with your phones? Yes. It's already out of their uh, system. You, they don't. They don't have. They don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. So yeah. for us, maybe this minority report sort of world is just mm -hmm. gonna be completely uh, out of uh, the, the, the way we conceive life. Yeah. But our next generation, our kids, they will already be born with this headset on on their uh, head. That's really sad, and, in my opinion. That that's sad, but this is. Human this progress, is, is human ev evolution. Progress. So yeah. Many people would say, oh, this is horrible. Why do we want to uh, yeah. get to this future? I just say it's uh, just the, how it's progress, progress yeah, uh, happens. Progress. As long as people are healthy and uh, somehow, uh, then then it's okay. But um, uh, the problem emerges when 
uh, we are having psychological effects as out a of uh, uh, as a result of uh, all these sort of things. So um, people in uh, social media, yeah. they're already uh, uh, getting huge effects uh, psychologically because they were not born in a, in a world where you are uh, in the middle of a, a lot of information, people can check on you at every uh, single moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this psychological effect can be even exacerbated in a world where you have this headset on. Yeah, and I, and I know uh, recently my friend was telling me that her nephew, uh, he's so used to playing computer games and he's always that now when he's not there, he's like it's mad he's moving hands like yeah he's moving yeah, his hand and yeah. he's like it agitated like and it's yeah. weird because it's changing set. how normal like we're humans we're meant to be social creatures we're meant to be around each other in greenery and in the sun yeah. and now we're changing our way we are designed and we will evolve eventually like yeah. that won't be important but it's interesting lots of uh, interesting points here so we touched briefly on NFTs NFTs the craze right now have you bought one Never, I never believed in that. But uh, yeah. yeah, so tell us, tell us, tell our audience, what's an NFT and would you hold it? The NFT is a specific asset that has been uh, digitalized. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's not go into the technical aspects here. It's just uh, conceptually, you have one person. Yeah. That can hold this specific microphone here that I'm looking at. Yeah. Uh, and this is specific m microphone is, is tangible. Yes. Right. So uh, I can hold it and do whatever I want with that. Mm -hmm. So we are bringing this concept to the virtual world. Understood. Right. So um, rather than have a generic uh, microphone object, you have that specific one. This is the whole concept behind NFT. And so how uh, many people are exchanging NFTs in a certain way. Yeah for me is completely crazy like uh buying pieces of art digital art yeah uh and that's you know someone creates an, uh, a piece of digital art and people buy for a hundred thousand yeah. dollars a monkey for me this Bought doesn't uh, yes. yeah, this doesn't have any 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 uh, value for me personally i've never bought one uh, and I do not believe in it if there is not a real purpose for it. Okay. So you know how people spend a lot of money uh, to buy just this piece of art? Yeah. Right? Uh, without a real purpose. Okay. Uh, for me, this is money that you wasted. Okay. okay. Even if uh, there have been trends, we are seeing today that, that they're going, going down, but of a lot. Yeah. However, if associated to an NFT, you have a utility, what's called a utility, mm -hmm. so uh, a, a real purpose for it, okay. mm -hmm. then it might gain value through time. So imagine that you're buying an, a specific NFT uh, that uh, uh, gives you some benefits. Okay. For example... So can we take the, the gorilla? The boat ape. Body. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So in that case, right, if you, if you create something around that, where if you hold a specific NFT of that monkey, yeah, and you're part of a yacht club or whatever, yeah, then everyone wants to be part of it. Yeah. Okay. So because you may be connecting to the most powerful people that hold that. Yeah. Right. So there is value in it. Whenever you're gonna sell back your NFT, that is actually accruing value through Correct. time yeah but if you're just buying for the purpose of putting in your little house uh, in your metaverse the image of a of a donkey yeah i don't see the real value there yeah interesting interesting Ro, do you have any thoughts on nfts do you value it I'm I'm like GP. Uh, well, GP has taken an extreme case. It says uh, yeah. not done anything with it unless there's a yeah. utility attached to it. Uh, on my side, I look at it this way: there's a possibility of doing something amazing for our creatives in Africa. Yes. All right, the traditional artists, because we've seen we've, we've seen Euro European art. I'd call it European art, uh, earning tons of value over the years, being displayed in the Louvre. People mm -hmm. talking about it. Can we do the same for Africana? And can we do it in the digital side? Yeah. Okay. Can it be a way for people to own underlying art? And this is a digital representation. 
I'm not an NFT expert. It's still open for debate. If someone can prove utility, much like uh, GPS said, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, Show I don't Africa know. Africa the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but have I invested about anything? No, yeah. I haven't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I'm of the same thought uh, as well. Um, I'm yet to see the utility, as GP puts it, and the value of it. And I'm not sold, so I'll stay away from it for now. Okay. Wise woman. <laughs> So lots of governments around the world are taking a different stance around blockchain. Some are pro, some are against it. Uh, a couple of days ago, the governor of the central bank in Kenya uh, stated that he, he does not see an actual use case for, for blockchain. Interesting. And made proclamations around uh, crypto being more of an asset than a currency. Interesting. So many thoughts, yeah. right? Imagine even locally. So GP... What are your thoughts on this? What are the pros? What are the cons of, of blockchain? As, as uh, or, or maybe crypto, or uh, crypto. Y- used yeah. as a currency, right? Yeah. So that would be that would be the main thing. So as we're seeing, um, many people are talking about um, blo- um, Bitcoin as uh, associated um, value to I don't know things like gold. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. And the reason for that is just because you know it's costly to move money uh, and bitcoin from one um, point to another yeah so this is called the gas Mm -hmm. so is how much you pay for a Mm -hmm. transaction as an individual yes so if you want to use bitcoin as your currency this becomes an issue Mm -hmm. got it so that's the first issue that I see there. You cannot uh, really go to buy, I don't know, uh, yes. um, a newspaper yeah. or if still are in news, I don't know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, or whatever yeah. um, that costs few cents and you spend $40 in gas, mm-hmm. makes no yeah. then it makes no sense. Okay. Right? So yeah. you cannot use it in uh, daily life. Maybe you, use, you can use it to buy bigger goods like a car mm-hmm. and moving money from one certain point of that when there is a larger amount. Yes. There, there is more value, okay? So this is one um, cons uh, against the uh, use of currency. Yeah. yeah. The other, and many other uh, coins or cryptos are tackling this, this problem. Okay. Or there is also in the um, uh, Bitcoin space, there is a, a abstraction sort of layer that mm-hmm. they're building above the blockchain uh, that allow are allowing these uh, sort of uh, um, interaction and transactions collapsing them together and pay only once the gas. So making and it uh, cheaper, yeah. 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 consolidating. Making it cheaper, yeah. Uh, these things are happening. These uh, dynamics are happening. But um, uh, the other issue that I see uh, with uh, using crypto as a cur- currency yeah. uh, uh, is the fact that as uh, as we speak, if I move money from my wallet to yours, so the wallet that holds my crypto yeah. to yours, and I might make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This money go to someone else. Goes to radical with that. To or or yeah, someone yeah. someone else that, that I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, And I've uh, I've lost my money, so I cannot recover. I can go to the guy and say, "Oh, can you give me back my yeah, money?" But what are he the can chances? he can easily say, "No, I don't. I don't want to refund you." Yeah. yeah. So before or with with the centralized uh, economy, you have a central authority that can look at uh, mistakes or even scams, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Someone taking money uh, and adjust. Mm-hmm. And um, with pure crypto, okay, you yeah. can you have lost your money. If someone steals it, you can't recover. If if you make a mistake, you can't recover. So wow. this is another big issue related to um, to the use of crypto as normal currency yes and if uh, there will be a day where we have resolved these two main issues then there is a great uh, use case for crypto to become a real currency, uh, currency. yeah because let's be honest guys i make a lot of wrong m-pesa transfers and then i have to click reversal and it yeah. works oh, it yes yeah. 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 but yeah. it's because there is a Process s- icon that yeah. uh, that can uh, handle this process exactly in uh, in real terms is basically giving money to someone yeah and this person can put it in the pocket and go 
you yeah. don't have anyone you go to and say, oh, uh, give me back because uh, this money is lost. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned two aspects, so the gas side and the aspect of someone can steal money. It's weird. Yeah. So there's talk about regulation around around crypto. So are you pro regulation? I'm I'm this? I'm definitely pro regulation. Okay. Um yeah, first of all we stop a bit of dodginess around that. Yeah. So we need to track. We need to be able to track because we avoid a lot of uh from tax evasion to underlying black market happening. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, once this happens and we have the support of the banks yeah we have the support of the governments then that's where uh, the the crypto can really scale yeah uh, so I think JP like one of the key values of uh, crypto is that you know it's not regulated and so other people might see value and it tr- and the key sell point is that you're the owner of your own money and you're like a key partner in this money system. So by adding regulation, essentially all you're doing is just converting paper money to a crypto digital currency. Mm -hmm. And so the value that's being sold today, the narrative will have to change should governments start regulating Regulating, yes. Should government That's the start, word. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Should government start regulating yes. um, this particular? So it loses the real value of like how it's currently being sold today to markets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I think purists, the purists of yeah. decentralization yeah. will argue against it. Exactly. Oh, yes, yes. Like, this is not what we envisioned. Yes, uh, Where's yeah. government stepping into but the space? But unfortunately, yeah. I think as humans, we do need regulation in every aspect, every industry. Because it goes back to the whole thing about greed. The greed, yeah. yeah. We, we go back there again. Yeah. Uh, but there are two visions. Yeah. Now, your vision makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think this is something that we stimulate adoption. Okay. Right? Yeah. To, to that point where we can really convert a, a, a fiat, which is like the, yeah. the, the uh, currency of a specific country, yeah. to something that is like um, uh, global. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another fantastic episode. Today we spoke about tech, philosophy. We talk about ants, NFTs. This was a broad one. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in. I'm the chief thinker. I'm the super striker. GP. (laughs) And we're out. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs)